Hello friends, welcome back to part 5 of my 2022 Q3 Tesla Forecast video review series. I will get back to sharing my desktop. Slide 9 is where we left off at uh, the end of part 4. <laughs> I'm going to confuse you with all these numbers. Um, and the next slide... Hold on. Got to be in the right window. The next slide shows Tesla inventory production and deliveries for all sites and models by quarter uh, running from 2018 through 2023. And my oh my, look how much Tesla's production and deliveries have grown. So production are the orange bars. The green bars are deliveries. And then what's underneath them? That's the inventory counts. So the beginning inventory is under production, and the ending inventory is under deliveries. And it's not a coincidence or you know happenstance that they uh, work out that way. This makes sense if you think through the problem of um, solving for how much ending inventory you ought to have, right? How, how do you know that there isn't uh, uh, how, how do you know you did your ending inventory count correctly? Well, what you ought to do is compare it against something and what you would compare it against. So let's just pick one. So for 2021 Q1, well, you know what your beginning inventory was. So you had that many cars on hand, finished goods inventory of vehicles at the start of the quarter. And then you know how many you produced because you're keeping count of how many vehicles you produce during that quarter, right? So that's this orange bar, and the, the sum of these two, the combined height of these two bars together, gives you the vehicles available for sale. It is not possible for you to, to deliver more vehicles than you had at the beginning of the quarter, plus the number of vehicles you produced during the quarter. That is the limit, right? Uh, but in reality, you never actually deliver that many. You deliver something less than that, right? So if you take the combined beginning inventory plus production, and then you subtract how many vehicles you delivered from that, and you should have a pretty good count of how many vehicles you delivered, then that leaves you with a theoretical ending inventory that you ought to be able to compare against your physical count of inventory and make sure that you counted your inventory correctly and you didn't forget a uh, parking lot because Paul Dezan would never forgive you for forgetting about a parking lot that you were supposed to have counted, right? Uh, Tesla Q, uh, that, that, that's the person who maintains the Tesla Q block list and uh, at his own expense flies a plane over parking lots to take photos of Teslas parked in a lot uh, because he thinks Tesla is a fraud and going bankrupt. Poor guy. Uh, he, he would know better if he didn't uh, uh, cultivate uh, an echo chamber on Twitter where only people who agree with him are permitted. <laughs> but uh, because of that block list, more than 10,000 accounts on Twitter are unable to communicate with Paul uh, to let him know uh, that he's wrong about that. Okay, so uh, this chart kind of shows a unique look. I'm not sure I've seen anybody else produce this chart or anything similar to it on how good a job Tesla is doing keeping these ending inventory counts low despite ever-growing production, right? And from here, Q2 of 2022 backwards, these are all actuals. Uh, you're only looking at my forecast for Q3 2022 forward as of the date of this recording. So I expect nothing but record production and deliveries every quarter going forward from here. The next chart is showing a completely different topic. This is the Tesla 2018 CEO Performance Award quarterly expense. This is how much expense hits the P&L. Uh, related to the stock comp package for Elon. And these actuals are almost every single bar on here. So I've been putting this chart out since I think around here, around, you know, mid Q2 2020. 
And I had it right. I, I uh, predicted back then that the next six quarters were going to see much larger expense amounts hitting uh, relative to what had been hitting up until that point. Uh, and I got that right. Uh, it was difficult to model out how much expense Tesla would declare because the rules uh, under gap accounting are so hard to understand and model on a spreadsheet. It took me a while, uh, but I was happy to have uh, gotten to the right answer. The maximum allowable expense under that plan was determined at the plan's outset to be $2.283 billion using a Black-Scholes model to estimate the value of the plan to Elon when he agreed to work in exchange for it. So you will not see Tesla declare more than that much total expense against this plan. And as you can see, uh, including the tiny razor thin amount uh, declared in Q2, I expect uh, the entire plan to be paid off by the end of this year with very, very tiny amounts. So these are much smaller expense hits than they were in the prior year. You'll see Tesla Q miss out on this uh, because they don't really understand how this works uh, in, in most cases. Well, most people don't, right? O only real big Tesla nerds like me uh, bother uh, figuring this out, but it's helpful to understand it when you see how SG&A has declined year over year uh, this year. Why is that? Well, this is a big piece of that. SG&A is not increasing by leaps and bounds year over year because the stock compensation expense portion of that has come down by so much. All right, that's all I wanted to say about these two charts which make up this video. So that concludes part five, and I will see you in the next one.